What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another Money and Toys video. Today, we're back with a brand new AEW Unrivaled figure review on the AEW Unrivaled series number nine, Brian Cage and Christian Cage. Both cages. Yeah, no relation here. There's just a lot of cages and pages in AEW. But I feel like we have waited a long time for a new AEW Unrivaled series. I feel like it's been a minute since series number eight. You guys know that series number seven and Unmatched series three have been clogging up the shelves at stores because Unrivaled nine and eight and Unmatched series four have taken so long to get there that they have just been accumulating at the stores at least that's been my experience but it's allowed for a lot of people to get their hands on those figures that they were searching for because a new set was not released but if you guys would like to grab these figures yourselves you can't go over to ringside collectibles wrestlingfigures.com use promo code md toys to save yourselves 10 percent over there you can pick up this set unmatched series four is up for pre-order you can get in on all the great things about aew figures play sets weaponry all the good stuff man go over to ringside collectibles use promo code md toys but i'm excited for this wave i've been waiting on this way for quite a while now and finally it is in our hands and one thing you'll notice immediately is that the upper deck logo is no longer here and there's no cards included with these guys so i am not sure if they're completely discontinuing that i'm not sure what the deal is there if this set will you know in the future will have upper deck cards i don't know what that is but if you guys look at the promo images on ringside collectibles they say they have upper deck cards and they're going to come with them but they do not have them here so i, I don't know what's up with that maybe we'll know some more news uh you know as we go along here but that Diving into Brian Cage and Christian Cage, two of the guys I was most looking forward to. We do have a great set. Everybody in this set is a first time in the line, so that is all great. This figure looked abysmal when we first saw it, but it looks a lot better in hand, and we will cover those things as well. But here is their front viewing windows. You got both talents on the side there. You guys know the gold foil going down the side does feature their names. You have number 74 and number 76. I don't usually ever do them by number, you know, who cares about that? But you guys know the bookshelf style like that. On the back, you do have a great image of Brian Cage and Christian on the back. Rest of the figures in the wave. I mean, this set's pretty loaded because we have so many first time in the lines. Six first time in the lines in here, so the people that were upset about having no first time in the lines or the lack of roster talent, we have six new characters to add in here, but on the other side, you just have the AEW logo, and that wraps up our packaging for these two. So, with all that being said, man, let's crack these guys out of the packaging, find out what they're all about, and see if they are worth a damn. So here's Christian Cage and Brian Cage out of their packaging, spinning round and round, and I'm actually quite impressed with both of these figures. Of course, we are going to get into all the details. We're going to break down their accessories, dive into the details, take a look at their head sculpts, how they move around, what they look like all together, man, and I'm quite impressed so far. I'm actually quite intrigued with it. We'll have to dive in, of course, and, and see and show you guys what we're dealing with here, and we're going to take you guys through it. So with all those things being said, man, let's start off with Brian Cage's accessories and Brian Cage, and then we will do Christian Cage's accessories and Christian Christian Cage. I don't even call him Christian Cage. I just call him Christian. You know, he's he's universally Christian. I don't I don't really care about the Cage part. To me, he's Christian, but he does have Cage at the end there, so I'm going to acknowledge it. So getting into Brian Cage's accessories, man, you do get the two interchangeable head sculpts, and then you get two sets of interchangeable hands. Now we're going to get into all these things because I want you guys to fully grasp what I'm what I'm saying, and I want you guys to give me your thoughts on it. So first of all, you do have the straight face right here, and it's not a bad head sculpt. I think it's kind of lacking a little bit of details there, but I think it looks like Brian Cage. You know, it captures the light. I don't think it's just spot on, but at the same time, like, I like it. He's got his spiked up hair. He's got his crazy mutton chop style Wolverine-esque facial hair going on. You know, it's not bad. I don't think it's bad at all. I think it could use more detail, more likeness, but it's not bad, you know? I, I think I do prefer this one, though, which is going to be the screaming expression, which I wish it had a little bit more anger, a little bit more intensity, but at the same time, it does look good. I like the head sculpt. I think this one is better compared to the other one, and, you know, you get the expression. This is great for figure photography. This is great. Gives you another option on the display and I think it captures the likeness well nice eyes painted all the good things hair might could swing to be a touch darker but there's the difference in the two so you guys can let me know your thoughts and then for interchangeable hands he does come with the standard AEW jazz wear sort of mic holding or grasping hands and then he comes with these hands now these are a first time in the line we've never seen these before it almost looks like he's about to snap he's handing something to somebody the throat cut hand maybe is this supposed to be his throat cut hand it just looks weird it's a very weird shape to it. It's very similar to what we've already seen here, which is gonna be like the grabby hand. It's very, very close to that. It almost looks like a titty twister hand. You know, like he grabs your titties and 
gives you a purple nurple or something. I don't know. I'm not hugely familiar with Brian Cage, so maybe I don't know, but I think it's his throat cutting hand. I don't know. You guys can let me know down below, but that is all you get for Brian Cage's accessories. All right, guys, so diving into Brian Cage himself, starting out with the head sculpt again. Here is how it sits on the neck. I think it sits pretty good. I've known for some AEW figures in the past where the head sits too low or too high. I'm not hating this. I think it looks okay. Traps are pretty big there. You know, Brian Cage is a very muscular guy, you know, so you got the big torso going on. Pretty sure this is a new sculpt from what I'm grasping. You know, the Trent figure had a big chest. The Wardlow had a big chest, but I think this is a one-of-one one sculpt going on. Big shoulders, big arms. Would have liked to seen more. Not as flat. I feel like a lot of their sculpts are a little bit too flat. I would like to see some bigger arms or like some more sculpted arms. I feel like their regular arms are way too skinny anyway, and I feel like the muscular arms don't have enough definition or, you know, like vascularity or anything like that. Would like to see more of that, but you do have the double jointed arms, which are all nice. One thing I don't like about the gear is actually, this is supposed to be, like, it looks all good. The decals and everything look good, but the white side of the gear is supposed to be more of like an iridescent. It's not supposed to be just flat white, and it kind of makes the figure look a little bit more cheap than I would like it to, you know? I think if they really gave it that glitter or anything like that. Also, the Christian Cage figure is supposed to have a little bit of glitter in there, I think, on his silver and gray parts, which would have been cool, but this one is lacking some details because it is missing that, but you got Cage on the front. You do have his nice slashes on the back there on the side. Got the nice skull logos going around. Love the wrist gauntlets. They are not removable, so that is kind of ishy, but you do get the nice sculpt on there. You get these strings sculpted in there. You got your logos. You have your black side and then your white side. I do like the way the legs feel. He also is on ball joints and all that good stuff. We are going to get into the articulation for you guys, but he's got the nice jack beefy legs. He's got his white knee pad and his black knee pad. On the back, it does have the black stripe, which is cool. Pretty sure these were open knee pads, but, you know, they do paint the inside there, so it looks like it's open at least, so that's kind of a cool detail. He has kind of the shorter kick pad mold, and he does have lower boot rotation, which is nice. You get the same, like, crosses there and down there. Kind of Wolverine S gear, not, like, totally, but you guys get the point there. Again, it is supposed to have some, like, iridescence on it, but before we get into our comparisons, though, I do want to give some articulation right quick, so he can look down pretty daggum far. It is on a ball hinge. I wish Mattel figures were on a ball hinge, because look at that right there, dude. He can look all the way down and all the way up, which is very nice for any moves. You don't really get a ton of pivoting, but you do get some there. You get a decent ab crunch. You know, he's a really big dude, so he can't bend over that well. He does get a pretty deep second ab cut, though. This goes above 90. You do get the full rotation. You get the bicep swivel here, which isn't loose. It feels a lot tighter. Some of these figures, sometimes this will be really stiff. These feel a lot better than in the past. I don't know if they changed anything, but the bicep swivel is a lot tighter. It doesn't feel like it's going to break or get loose on you. It actually feels quite nice. He does have the split seats for the ball joints. He's got the upper thigh cut. He can kick forward nice. He does have double jointed knees, and he does have he does have lower boot rotation, and he has a great ankle pivot, which is fantastic. Again, man, this guy feels really, really good in the hand. I think you guys are going to enjoy him a lot. If you guys like to move your figures around, you like to pose them around, this Brian Cage is going to be able to slap your collection right in the titties, if you get what I'm saying. So, this is a really good one, man. I like this figure a lot, but let's get into some AEW figure comparisons. And for your larger figure comparisons between the rest of our AEW and rival figures, you have Lance Archer, you have Luchasaurus, and you have Wardlow up next to Brian Cage, and you guys can see here that he is a tad taller there. I don't think Brian Cage is, like, too, too tall, so that's pretty cool. I also want to see what this looks like, just for shishes and gigs, you know? Just, just, just for scientific experiment here, just to see what this would look like. Uh, and then you can take this, and then pop this head over onto this. Just to, again, I just want to see it for science there. If you wanted to put Brian Cage in a singlet or something, there's that. It's a little bit of a tall neck there, not like too crazy there, but maybe you can make a shirtless Wardlow. Is that possible here? Making a shirtless Wardlow, and he has no neck. Oh, yeah, I don't think that works there, but it was worth the effort, and look how, like, weird that looks. Good Lord. Good Jesus, I, I don't like it. Get it. Fix it, fix it. And then for another figure comparison, here's Brian Cage up next to Kenny Omega, just for a little standard height. You know, not a big guy, just a regular guy there, and Kenny Omega is about six foot, six one, somewhere in there, so that works out for me, and Brian Cage, I believe, does come in at six foot as well, so I think this works out perfectly. So getting into Christian's head sculpts and his accessories right here, man, I think that this head sculpt right here, this is the one that a lot of people are going to be talking about. It is the one right out of the packaging. Now, we saw this figure at Fan Fest, right? We saw this head sculpt at Fan Fest, and I got to say, man, they did my man Christian dirty. He looked pretty damn bad, man. He did not look good in those images, but what I'm seeing right here looks a whole lot better. Now, I will say they probably added a couple wrinkles, or maybe they added too many wrinkles, but I think that, like, look at that right there. I think that looks a whole lot better. I think it does capture the likeness. I like the beard. I like the 
hair color. I think they really captured Christian. And you'll see when we get to the figure that I really think they captured his body and like the way he looks and the way his body is proportioned. I like this head. I like this head a lot. I think it looks a whole lot better than we thought it was going to look. And we didn't really know about this head sculpt until a later day. That is the grimacing head sculpt of the pissed off Christian head. And I like that one too. I think both of these look pretty damn good. Are they perfect? I don't think so. But I think, you know, when we get into the comparisons, I think we're going to end up liking these head sculpts. So these look pretty good. I like the sculpts. You know, anytime you have a guy doing a different expression, you want it to look like the same guy doing that expression. I think they did capture that. He's looking off to the right. I like the hair sculpt. I like the colors. I think they did a good job here. I like these a lot. Now, as far as interchangeable hands, this is very odd. Again, very odd with the interchangeable hands. We've known that from Jazzwear so far. So, he comes with one right fist. This is a right fist. And this hand is a left fist, but it's like an extended version. It's almost like a half-assed thumbs up, sort of like Orange Cassidy. And then you get his, you know, his lookout hand, you know, like the flat lookout hand, you know, during, you know, you, you know the Christian entrance hand, kind of, or the Christian lookout hand. You get that, you know, so you can do this right here. You know, you got all that, which is really cool. His other hand is one of these again. So you get a whole pair of these, and I compared them to Orange Cassidy, because I was like, oh, is this like a half, is this the same, like, thumbs up style hand? And it's not. It's a little bit different. So you guys can see here, the gap is closed a little bit there between the two hands. So I don't, I don't know what's up with that. It's almost like an open fist, I guess. So you get your closed fist, and then you have, like, more of an open fist slash, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that one. I like to think of myself as knowing what the hell I'm talking about, but you have these hands right here. So there's that. So getting into Christian, man, starting out the head sculpt, we did take a look at it, but it does look good on the figure, you know, we've, we've taken a closer look at that. Going down into the torso, this is what I'm talking about, dude, that looks like Christian's torso, you know, maybe it could use a little bit more definition, but I still think it looks good, it's more realistic. That's what we get a lot of with the AEW figures, a lot of the torsos are pretty realistic, which is cool. He does have his tattoo over here, no idea what it's supposed to be, and I think that translates to real life, because, you know, I've never known what that's supposed to be, so I think that looks good. You do have your black elbow pads, black wrist tape, which is actually sculpted on there. It is not removable. We do have his nice tights right here. It is a bit weird how, like, the crotch engulfs the tights a little bit. You guys can see here, it's a little bit wider than the torso there. Not a huge deal, but it is something worth to note. But you get your floral patterns. You do get the Christian Cage design down the side. He's had similar tights for a long time now. Got the CC. Got, like, different stuff going on. Big panels going on. It's like his debut gear, I think, right? I think this was his debut, debut gear back in August. It's got his orangish-brown color. You got your black and your white going down into the legs. Knee pads and knees look really weird, man. I think knee pads need to desperately be on these figures because it makes them look very weird. Similar to CM Punk, they get really skinny down there and it looks odd. And then you have his tall, skinny boots down here, which I do believe is a new mold. I don't think we've seen this mold quite yet. They're not wide like Wardlow. They're not wide like MJF. These look to be new to me, but that will be found out. I'm pretty sure they are. But zooming out, figure looks pretty standard here. Just like standing here, this looks like Christian Cage, I think, man. Like just the way he, he stands. Hands. Like, this just has that weird Christian stance to him, doesn't it? I, I just think it looks pretty damn perfect as far as that concern. I think it captures Christian pretty damn good. I think if you're a fan of Christian, you're going to enjoy this figure a lot because I just feel like anytime a figure can just encapsulate somebody and translate it from real life to action figure form and it looked just like the person, I think that's undefeated, you know? But let's get into some articulation before we take a look at some comparisons. So far as articulation, he can look down pretty good and look up very well. Like, look at that right there, man. Any Anytime, like, good lord. He can look straight down and practically straight up. That is something that is lacking in other figures, and I think they captured it really nicely here. Ab crunch up top isn't the best, but much like Brian Cage, his bottom one is a little bit better. You can get a little bit deeper in there, not like crazy, but I still think it's not bad at all. You don't get really any gappage in the back as well, so that's a really nice touch there. He does have above 90 here. Last, just like Brian Cage, like, his, his bicep swivel is not loose. You do get the double joint arm. The elbow does get in the way, you know, the elbow pad is there, but you do get the hands that go up and down, and they rotate here. You do have a crazy split because of the ball joints there. He does have upper thigh cut. He does have double jointed knees, which works great because he doesn't have knee pads on, and then you do get boot rotation, and you get a nice ankle pivot. The only thing I'll say about the way this guy stands up is that the boots are very skinny, and if they get out of line or anything like that, he could easily fall over, but I'm not having like a ton of trouble right now, so that's, that's good. He doesn't have like loose boots or anything, and he does have the 
forward and back. I forgot about that part right there. They can go down and up. And so, it's not bad. It's definitely not bad, but it just looks a bit wonky at times because of the skinny legs. But standing back here, I think it looks okay. So for your Christian figure comparisons, here is our last Elite that we ever got from Mattel. It is the Fan Takeover WWE Elite Amazon exclusive. You guys can see that he's definitely much taller here. Like, the Mattel definitely does not stack up as far as height is concerned. It's just so cool, honestly, to see the two companies represent a character. Like, isn't it wild? I think that's just so cool. I do believe that Christian's 6'1". I, I want to say he's 6'1". So if we compare these two to an edge, maybe that will give us a better height here. And yeah, so I'll be real. I think this AEW Christian is probably standing a little bit too tall, but the Mattel size probably adds up pretty equal because Edge is supposed to be 6'5". So these scale pretty decent. And then I think this one's a little bit too tall. Maybe it's in that thigh area. Those thighs are looking a little bit long there, but I don't think it's terrible. You know, I don't think it's egregious or anything like that. If you guys want to compare it even more, you can compare Kenny Omega, who's supposed to be six foot. And honestly, that doesn't look terrible. I mean, it's, you know, if he's supposed to be 6'1", 6'2", this would add up pretty decently. I don't know. Let's get into the head sculpts real quick, though. Which one do you guys prefer? Do you guys prefer the fan takeover version right here? Or do you guys prefer the AEW Unrivaled? I think it's kind of hard because I feel like almost, like, you can tell they're two different lines, right? Like, if you look at AEW's line and then you look at, you know, Mattel's line, I feel like this is more realistic as far as, you know, just getting things sculpted accurately and stuff like that. This is more, I don't know, cartoony-esque, I guess, but at the same time, they're both realistic. I, I don't know. You guys could let me know. Which one would you rather have? There's obviously pros and cons to both, but it is cool to see the same character from two different companies, and we're going to get a, lot, a whole lot more like that this year with Jeff Hardy, CM Punk. We're going to see it continue to happen, so that, that's beautiful to see. But I think that pretty much wraps up our two-in-one review on Brian Cage and Christian here from Unrivaled Series number 9. These are the two that I think I was most looking forward to. I was looking forward to Eddie Kingston a whole bunch as well, but we will cover him tomorrow. So stay tuned for tomorrow, guys. Wanted to split it up just a little bit here but we are going to review every single figure in the series and we're going to take you guys entirely through it but I'm overly impressed with both I thought that both of them kind of stood out to me I think that my biggest issues with Christian are really just his legs I hate the way that they look how skinny they look I think with knee pads on him he'll look a lot better and like his legs are a little bit wobbly because of that reason the Brian Cage figure feels fantastic in the hand and while I've never been a huge Brian Cage guy this figure makes me want to be a bigger fan of the guy I know he's a super athlete he moves around fantastic in the ring and you're not going to have any issues doing any of those moves with this guy because he can pose around with the best of them he feels really good in the hand tons of articulation moves like a unit and as a big guy you love to see that you love that he's able to be posed around i'm really digging the head sculpts that we got on both of these i would prefer more more anger on the brian cage version but the christian cage gritty head sculpt like grimacing head sculpt is fantastic love that we're getting all these accessories would have liked to seen some more cloth here in the wave here but I do like the interchangeable head sculpts. I think those are really great. And I, I love the way they're interchangeable. I love everything that we got going right now with Unrivaled Series number 9. And I think it's a big step forward from the last couple sets. But we will not know until we complete the wave here. But if you guys would like to grab these, go over to Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. Loving what I'm seeing so far. Of course, we have a lot more to get through. But we will have to ride it out and see. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. Leave me your thoughts on Unrivaled Series Series 9 Christian and Brian Cage down below. If you guys own these figures, if you guys have seen these yet, let me know your thoughts on them, how they feel in hand, and I will see you guys next time. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys next time. You cross the line, I've been